All right, this is Justin Williams Voy. Um, good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you would happen to be. It is uh, morning time here uh, in beautiful Southern Oregon. And today I've decided I'm kind of looking at some more, um, I don't know how to really explain where my mind is with things right now, other than I'm looking at some uh, designs here, Indian designs from ancient Ecuador with 282 illustrations. So let's just go ahead and proceed with that. I don't know much about this book. I've had this in my collection um, for some time. Dover Pictorial Archive series. So some interesting stuff here. Turkish designs, machinery, mechanical devices, ornamental borders, ancient Egyptian designs. So I guess a little background on this kind of stuff, why I pick it, this stuff up. There's several reasons, um, I guess, more profound, deeper philosophical meanings behind it for me may be that I'm very interested in perennialism and um, archetypes. And for some reason, minimalistic, I hesitate to use the word primitive because I um, kind of disagree with that sort of language where I think that... Um, Something that can be very simple and minimalistic does not imply primitive in a negative connotation. Uh, maybe timeless would be a better word. Um, I'm not really sure, but I definitely don't like the word primitive in the ancient um, anthropological way, if that makes sense. Um, let me try to track here with my thinking. I just mean that um, just because something in someone's mind or in a modern mindset may um, be more simplistic than what they the stimuli they're used to being present, presented with does not really mean um, that it is in fact simplis simplistic, but there can be deep, deep intrinsic um, value and meaning. And um, so I guess that's what I'm going for. A lot of my um, tattoos on myself, I have, um, a lot of more uh, minimalist, a lot of black work. Some of my legs, I have a lot of like stuff from back in the day um, that would be more of my youth that I've begun to be covered with black solids. Eventually, I'm going to have complete blackouts there. And I love uh, minimal designs that represent um, animals found in like within the Indo-European um, pantheon. And I guess um, beyond that, um, so that stuff is of interest to me and it's kind of like the whole idea of there's no new thing under the sun. I think that, um, a lot of symbols and these meanings, they've been around. If you look at comparative myth and those sort of things, um, I think that we see a cross-cultural phenomena even at time, um, and that can go really into more like Jungian thought, or if you look at like Jung's red book, and things like that. So I think that I'm attracted to that in a very natural um, way. Um, this is interesting here, talking about mass dancers, hunters with game bags, mass hunters with game bags, mass people conversing. Yeah, even masks in themselves, right? Um, those kind of things. There's a lot to be said about that sometimes in um, art therapy classes or in, yeah, in the art therapy classes that I've had and I've even studied um, different art therapy modalities and when I was studying psychology, um, post back stuff, not so much as stuff as an undergraduate, but later in life, after studying the humanities, I kind of returned to study some um, more graduate level psychological stuff and did like history of psychotherapy and also more of like the history of art therapy or how um, 
art began to be incorporated into psychology and as far as I mean, I guess art would be have incorporated into psychology forever, but I mean more conventional um, Western um, treatment modalities or useful um, by psychologists and I think in the past psychiatrists. I don't know if a whole lot of psychiatrists really um, would use that anymore. I guess their knowledge and skills that would definitely come into play. However, unfortunately, it's been my experience as um, a psychiatric provider, one would be much more dealing with med management and things of that nature today, at least in North America, in my experience, I think ideally, this is just my ramblings, folks, so ideally, a uh, psychiatrist would incorporate both, um, doing the function of psychotherapy and um administering medications but be that as it may i'm attracted to this stuff a lot of reasons i love perennialism i am very interested in individuals like freestyle shown his and his wife's art um symbols and meaning are so so um powerful they invoke or elicit a response and that kind of comes into all forms of art I guess I would really, um, more than anything, if I had to put definition on the work that I do, I would say it is artistic and I fulfill the function of an artist. And a lot of what I do is meant to elicit a particular response from the individual, but not limited into scope. Maybe what it means for me at the time when I'm making it will be something that's, um, perceived in an entirely different manner. I'm not so sure. I just know my personal journey as a human. I started off as a child that was very artistically inclined. Hours and hours and hours of solitary drawing, art, illustrating graphic novels. <clears throat> Fascinated at all kinds of art. I would say I do like classical forms of art better than uh, more modernist or postmodern stuff. I mean, however, I mean, there's a stack of 228 sitting here as I contemplate uh, my next move as far as what I would like to make as far as um, slaps, um, doing art 228s. Um, so, and my interest in graffiti has been also a lifelong thing, but it has so much more to do with human modes of expression and communication. Um, I think culture, it went along with a lot of the music I was into. People have been drawing symbols and writing things that symbolize themselves or their names or identifying objects or what have you for a very, very long time. It's like, Unseparable, I think, from what it is to be a human, even if you look at the different media forms of media that we use. However, for me, there's something soothing and peaceful. Oh, that's pretty dope. I love that. The sea lions there. They almost remind me of like heads of like crows to me for some reason. But yeah, and I love this kind of thing too, just the black lines just the um very nice they're a nice minimalist aesthetic very like pleasing um to the eye in my opinion and like i began when i was talking about this seagull pelican a pelican in flight um, you know, and okay, so when I first began talking about this, I was mentioning my tattoos, so I'll come back to that. But what I want to talk about is um, animals and cross-cultural and comparative myth and different meanings. It's so fascinating, like how something like, say, like an owl can represent both wisdom and folly. You could, like, Google search, like, the meaning behind a dragonfly or um, the meaning behind, I don't know, like a um, butterfly or a sparrow tattoo, a moth, or uh, particular plants. And you're going to find a plethora of meanings, so I don't know if you're going to really solve any particular riddles there other than you're going to um, 
no, like a person could explain to you at the time when they got a tattoo, perhaps what it meant. But sometimes even when we get those things, we're not fully even aware of what we're doing consciously, subconsciously. I know for me getting many blackouts, I had an entire arm sleeve that was very, it would be considered by many very beautiful American traditionalist stuff. Um, not quite as fancy as some of the stuff that you see now that these hipsters have seemed to have perfected. Sorry, that's just a little bit of me coming out there. But um, I felt that there was a real loss of something. I mean, here's this is sitting here. I love pop cultural stuff like this, and it's almost iconic in its own right. Um, or if you look at a symbol, say like this, right? Like, or you just see that it's inseparable from him. Uh, you see this Pepsi back behind him. All I wanted was a Pepsi and one Pepsi and she wouldn't give it to me. Ow. So even looking at that, immediately the lyrics um, flood to my mind and things associated with that um, come to mind. Um, but then there's, look at all the things that I associate with that. It's so interesting. I always wonder about like these, like ancient cultures or um, cultures, I mean, I guess every culture would be considered tribal in a way, but um, specific, each culture and the meaning and implications behind symbols and um, they're, they're everywhere, right? You guys were surrounded by those things. Mm. So... Um, there came a time where my tattoos that I wanted to um, cover a lot of that and I just went over that with black. It's almost like a chalkboard or a clean slate or it, it was definitely a transformation phase of like reducing that into next to nothingness or just blackness. And then I even have a lot of tattoos that are black on black, which is at a time was almost unheard of in the tattooing world, but has seemed to grow in popularity. A lot of stuff I want, I get tempted to, I want to do things that invokes certain good memories of mine. I have positive associations with a lot of things that have to do with like the punk and a hardcore movement, just as I do with like comic books and graphic novels and things of my youth that have definitely shaped the adult man that I have become. Um, however, there's really something that mostly appeals to me about the minimalism. And then um, of recent, I even had some, um, if you can see that, Alchemics symbols um, tattooed on me. My actually, my um, girlfriend. That's another thing is I'm very particular about who does tattoos on me and choosing to like have an individual um, that you're involved in a relationship with tattoo you. I think that's a very powerful thing. But for me, I have been very aware of the energy the importance of what, you know, a lot of you guys, maybe you walked into a tattoo studio at a time and then you've gotten a tattoo, say, by, I don't know how this video became all tattoo oriented either, but you, you know, you get a tattoo by someone um, and, you know, there's an opportunity that, one, um, you can form deep and meaningful lasting relationship with a tattooer, but two, also, um, you... Want to look out because you're wanting to get a tattoo or just art. And I have some stuff on me by particular tattooers that I don't even really care for anymore. Um, as far as I just don't care for the um, person that they present to be to the world. However, the art is good. And that's something else. Well, the art is there. It's on there. But also the experience really counts at this point in my life. So it's another reason I'm teaching my partner or my girlfriend, I believe, that will be together for a lifetime. Um, and if not, that's okay. Uh, as far as um, none of us really know the future. However, I'm choosing to believe that and realizing that the connection is like very real. So there's trust and I want to spend time with that person, I guess is what I'm saying. And I enjoy the experience and I enjoy being tattooed um, by her. I have a few other um, friends that I consider close friends. We don't hang out every day or anything, but um, they have done some tattooing on me um, more recent. And those experiences also have been good. And sometimes it's like therapy. My girlfriend is a therapist. I've been in mental health and practicing and um, provider for just 
way too long, even though, I, as I told you guys, I'm on a hiatus, and I don't ever think I want to go back, to be honest. Like, it's too enjoyable being away from that. But you revisit it to a certain capacity. It's You can't really separate it if it's like a calling or gifting that you've been given in life. And so... Uh, we've talked about even incorporating tattooing into um, therapy and treatment and even before have just made conversation, light conversation about what it would be like to be in practice together and to even provide those things, to do things with art. My girlfriend uh, studied art as an under... Graduate, there's something so appealing to me about just going to art school and taking that up as a study. I chose a more academic path centering around literature and philosophy, but art has always been huge and meaningful for me. There's been seasons where I've been very hyper-focused on it and other seasons where um, it's taken a backseat to textual studies, which is still um, art to me. I talk a lot in videos about people like Mishima and there's a lot of other more contemporary authors that I'm into that also function as visual artists. Some of you may have seen my shadow work and a little key and insight is um, that person is me and I am that person, but also I'm taking a look at a specific focused area of um, more of my shadow side and looking in a Jungian way to integrate. We all... Generally, I mean, we, maybe you come up with more of like a gray as a definition of a human person being a gray area person. Um, we all have the light and the darkness within us. Um, so I don't know where I'm going with this. Just a little bit of free association there, I guess. But yeah, so my girlfriend studying art as an undergrad and then going into she wasn't even aware until someone brought into her awareness. I hope I'm getting the story right. Um, what art therapy was and when she found it out about that she wanted to go to school and pursue that and pursue um, a graduate degree in psychology and um, she does a lot of the stuff she does is art and we do art and create together and that's very very powerful as a matter of fact we've kind of taken a little break from that we went on vacation we're going to go on another little mini vacation I haven't done that kind of thing forever she needs that. She works very, very hard at what she does. Um, and also is in a leadership role. And so we need that. But I also think her and I, man, we should really get back into creating art together. Maybe we'll even work on those two two eights that I have laying in front of me together. That might be cool. I've made some paintings. I have a thing with as a... a Child, I don't want to reveal too much of my child's psychology, but some of the artist within me wasn't necessarily um, nourished or love it should be. I'm not, my mom was always very encouraging. My sister was always very encouraging. My sister's an artist as well. She's a designer, very, very talented designer, actually, and lives in Los Angeles. And um, those are beautiful. These are so beautiful. Raw umber. Raw umber. I don't know why I am attracted to that, to this, like, white on. I don't think that I'd want to necessarily, I have tattooed with negative space, tattoo white over blackout stuff that I have, but this is, like, so beautiful. And brainstorming, too, my girlfriend's going to be tattooing some more stuff on me, probably astrological related, but also um, we're looking for new ideas. I think she's going to do a black on black mandala on me. Um, so I don't know guys, uh, I gotta wrap it up here, I'm running out of time, I don't know, I didn't specifically talk about this book more than look at it and prattle on, uh, endless monologues for days, and um, you know, new subscribers, thank you so much, I appreciate you, I am coming up with a direction, this is taking shape and there is going to be a central focus on this channel, uh, I can't really separate it. From the person I am it's subjective so of course we're going to look at the human person and psychology and mental health as well as art right now I'm just sharing a lot of my arts um, a lot of my interests and hobbies and um, hoping that it will resonate with you as well so this has been a fun time 
It's like a vlog for me. And um, I'm going to sign off now. Justin Williams Savoy. Have a wonderful day, and I'll be providing more content soon.